My guest today is Jen Edwards. She is an intuitive energy healer born in Zimbabwe and who lived in South Africa for a long time. She is currently loving living in Leeds and healing globally. She is an accredited healing facilitator using the emotion code and the body code and has been practicing as a healer since 2015 when she got her first energy healing qualification. She has helped hundreds of people all around the world with emotional, physical and mental issues by helping to sort out old emotional baggage that no longer serves them and that leads to stress and disease. She works on the premise that our bodies have a powerful ability to restore our own health if conditions are right. So she tries to make the conditions right with the right energy balance. So welcome to the show, Jen. How lovely to have you here. Thanks, Madeline. Thanks so much for inviting me. I'm delighted to be here. I'm so excited. Thank A you. pleasure. So the very first question that I ask every guest that comes on the show, because we are called Unbroken, is what does the word unbroken mean to you? Yes, well, the thing, the, the image that immediately springs to my mind when I hear the word unbroken is an image of a tree or a sapling which kind of bends and waves in the wind and doesn't snap because it's resilient enough to move with the wind and to go with the flow, as opposed to being um, this really rigidly rooted tree, which if put under too much pressure, will find that its branches snap off and, and it and, and bits of it fall off and that bits of it break. And so for me, that is unbroken. It's the ability to be resilient and to recover. Yeah, and to go with the winds, to go with the storms that come, but to remain rooted or to remain grounded in the earth. That's a brilliant uh, description of it. I love it. I found out more about my adoption story in the last year or two than I had for all of my previous years. So I'm 64 now. So essentially for more than 60 years, I had very, very little information about my adoption. I knew, I knew right from the get go. So we had a saying in Zimbabwe, which was, a brick and a ticky high and that okay. means say that age, say that again a brick and a ticky high a, now, a, ticky, a, ticky, high. a ticky was a little coin like okay. a two and a half cent coin and so a very flat little coin and a brick so i knew from right from tiny i could never remember a time not knowing that i was adopted okay and I was adopted into a stunning, wonderful, loving, embracing, unconditionally loving family. I was such a lucky kid. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was always very transparent about being adopted. I used to speak about it freely and say, I'm the luckiest kid on the block. I always knew. And yet there was at the core of me, there was what I call a mother wound. There okay. was this hole, there was this gaping chasm where she should have been and she wasn't okay so despite having that amazing supportive environment to grow up it sounds like you just never felt that you were quite enough or 100 part of you was missing 100 percent. i felt um I, I, I never felt enough i think that's like the core underlying message that has run through my life is not enough and i i think i never dealt with it i never asked my adoptive parents why did you adopt me I never asked them for the story of my mother. I never asked, did you know my mother? I never asked anything about her because it felt so disloyal. Okay. So I'm given... hearing you didn't ask the questions, but inwardly, were you ask, asking yourself those questions? Were you must, you know, having, wondering about the, the answers to those questions? Yes, I did. Yeah. I absolutely wondered about the answers. I wondered why didn't she want me? why did she and i almost had a mental image in my mind of her throwing me away because i wasn't good enough i wasn't good enough for her to want to keep me and and i had this image of her getting rid of me and i knew as i got you know into i guess early 20s maybe mm -hmm. late teenage years i realized in my head so the adult part of me knew mm -hmm. that she grew up or she was living in a very patriarchal um, uh, supposedly Christian society very judgmental very conservative society which was Zimbabwe in the 1950s very small world and she would have been in a 
very hard place if she didn't have the support and the structures around her that she needed in order to have an illegitimate child. She would have been very judged. I could never bring consistent money into my life. I could never consistently start earning what I was worth with my skill set. And then it changed. I, uh, I went to a financial consultant. Mm -hmm. Now, this is really weird. He was a man and he was a financial consultant. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to him about what I could do about investing for retirement and so on and so on and how I could manage my money better. And I was in my, my 50s. I was probably about 54, 55. And he said something to me about something. I can't honestly remember what it was, Madeleine, but he said something which triggered me. And I got a bit swimmy eyed and trembly lipped. And he looked at me and he said, you know what, Jen? I go to an energy healer. Would you like her details? And I thought, well, okay, you know, this is interesting. Not the okay, kind of person I, the, would I was exactly what I was going to say, which shouldn't be stereotyping people, but not the kind of person you imagine would go to an energy healer. No. Mm -hmm. I think what happens is I think doors open and people appear. Yeah. I think that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. I believe that completely. But you have to walk through the door. The door can open. It can take us many times to get the courage to walk through that door. Yes, yeah. exactly. But you were ready at that point. I think I was ready on some level. I don't know what level I was ready on and I hadn't really consciously thought I was ready, mm -hmm. but he, he introduced me to this energy healer and also to a coach. And I started working with the coach who did family constellation work with me. And for anyone who's not familiar with that, it is, uh, she was a psy psychiatrist or psychologist. And what you do with family constellation work is you, you work with a group of people who you don't know mm -hmm. and you go into a room and my story that I wanted to work with was being adopted. So I would, there were people in the room who would volunteer, okay, I'll stand as Jen's biological mother and someone else would stand as Jen's adopted mother and the family dynamics. So the biological parents and the adopted parents and the brother. And so in the family constellation, what you do is as the main play, play role player, you sort of move people around to how you feel they should be in relation to you, literally standing physically in a room and where people are. You're kind of directing your life story really, aren't you, in a way? Directing your life story, but it's quite weird what happens. It's, it's quite astonishing what happens because the people who take on the role of mother, father, brother, whatever, say the most unexpected things and then they move themselves away from you or further away from you or closer to you. And anyway, I started doing that work with the coach and then with the healer, mm -hmm. what happened was I went to her and she was an intuitive energy healer, which I'd never heard of before. I had done Reiki in the past. I had done one or two sessions of Reiki and not been engaged with it. I didn't mm -hmm. find, I, 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 I'm the kind of person who likes to know, I like to measure things. I like, okay. I need to measure things. And I couldn't measure anything with That's Reiki. It's a felt thing really, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't notice any changes before and after. So the thought of going to an intuitive energy healer, I kind of went because he suggested it, not because I really thought Okay, so Maybe you're a bit cynical is what you're saying. <laughs> hugely cynical. Okay. Hugely, hugely cynical. Yeah. I went to her with no agenda. I went to her with no purpose. I didn't go to her with uh, um, any ideas of working with something. I just thought, let's see what comes up. Let's see what happens. And she put her wrist on my finger. She was a kinesiologist energy healer. So she tested with her body. She put her wrist on my finger and she said to me, who abandoned you? So I believe that I will keep on healing for the rest of my life. I, was I don't. Going to, I was, totally agree. I think we're always improving and, and polishing that diamond. You know, when we arrive, I think we're a bit like a piece of charcoal, but we just polish it and polish it and polish it. It's, we're never finished polishing. Yes, I, I love what you say. I am so resonating with what you say. I think it is so 
true. We complete, we're always polishing the diamond. We're always looking for the next thing. And because, um, you know, because I keep on working on myself, new vistas open for me. I'm doing things I never dreamt I would do. I've written a book. You've Yay. written a book. I mean, you know how that feels. Did you yes. ever imagine you would write never. a book? <laughs> never. Never, yeah. of course yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. Astonishing things um, that have, that have, I, I, I'm, I'm doing other things. I'm training other people um, mm -hmm. to be healers in, in the kind of healing modality that I do. Not um, emotion code and body code, but I do group healing. I heal groups of people and I'm writing material to, to help people to do that. I mean, that blows me away yeah. because I never dreamed I would do that. So and if you could go back in time, what would you tell your younger Jen? What advice would you like to be able to give her if you could? I think I would say it's up to you. I think I would say until you <clears throat> are able to look at yourself and accept yourself and love yourself enough to want to change yourself, until you are able to make those changes, you'll stay the same. You'll never be the the one you'll never be the person you want to be you'll never be the person who's free of this baggage until you want to make the change yourself and it's up to you it's not you know it's not my mother's fault that I had this belief she didn't look at me and say oh you're not enough I don't want you she wanted me and she loved me but I until I acknowledged that with my heart I wasn't able to acknowledge it more so I think it's about yourself I think you yourself have to be responsible and accountable for your healing and you have to want to heal yeah and I love that advice to yourself because in some ways it's not really advice it's actually just saying when you're ready you will do the work so yes. it's putting no regrets on yourself for all it took you to your 50s to get to that space of acceptance it's like when the doors open they will open and when I'm ready to face it I will face it so it's actually just being okay with where you're at, isn't it? Yes, I love that. It's being okay with where you're at yeah. and, and knowing that where you're at is the best place for you right now and saying, I don't always have to be here. I can move forward if I choose. So we have this underlying message, this tape, if you like, that goes around and goes around and says, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Whatever the limiting belief systems yeah. are that, that you have. And so I worked with Psyche in releasing my own limiting belief systems. And then because I was working with this emotion code and body code healer, and because the results were so profound, because I started to like myself. Yay! Yay! <laughs>